Baruch Hashem. Thank you very much, uh, Rabbi Shimon. Shalom, shalom, lekulam. Shalom, shalom. And uh, Shavua Tov. Shavua Tov, Rabbi Anatan. I, there I have got uh, Rabbi Eliyahu Gaon. And, um, well, yeah. Uh, others will uh, join us, perhaps. Uh, not perhaps. That's what I said. They will join us. Um, uh, we will continue where Rabbi Shimon left off. Continue going with uh, learning uh, the Alachot according to Ben Shai. Rabbi Shimon left off. Telacha number 13. And we go on with Halacha number 14. The pages of the Halacha, the all the Halachot we are learning, have been sent into, I mean, it's sent into the group or to the group you would be able to follow. It's about the vessels. The vessels or to all the preparation for our Pesach, how to prepare your vessels. Reads as follows. A vessel which is used to bake all broil chametz that is without liquid such as a spit must be made kosher for pesa before being used for pesa by being heated over a naked flame it is not sufficient to immerse it in boiling water Many, well, each uh, minihag has its own way of um, dealing with this matter. But this is according to Ben Shkai. Strictly speaking, a frying pan may be made kosher by immersion in a boiling water. But the Rema Zao, one of the uh, Allah, um, 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 authority on Allah rules that it may not, it may only be made kosher by being heated over a naked flame. And that those who take a more stringent view will, it, will it certainly be rewarded for it. Nevertheless, it is not necessary to heat the frame pan to such a high temperature that sparks, that sparks fly from it. And it is sufficient to heat it until it is hot enough to straw touching the outside of the vessel will catch fire. It is not possible, it is not possible to make an earthenware vessel kosher for Pesach. Even those of Pesachim, even though they are not used to, used over an open flame, they should be thoroughly cleansed and locked away over Pesach, so that one should not come to use them by mistake during the festival. One cannot make kosher in a millet plate. What, what are these plates, Rabbi Akiva? I, I don't I don't know this type of in millet. In millet, it's spelled. Okay, never mind. Okay, can I, what kind of plate 
add this. I'm not uh, familiar with ML uh, plates. Yes. I don't know what. I'm going to check on my <laughs> Okay. Never mind. Uh, one of my rabbinim is going to check what kind of plate are these. Glass vessels, which are used for cold water, for, for cold food, even beer glasses, may be made kosher for pesa by filling them with water and leaving them to stand for 24 hours. Then ref refilling them with fresh water and they leave it to stand for a second 24 hours. And again, a third time. What is this? Where, where is it? What this way, say, for kids? Ah. Dinner wear is hard to wear. Okay. 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 So, porcelain? Ah, okay. We, we, we saw, uh, friend, it's some people have got the, the, the customs or mini a mini game just to, to, to do it um, once, meaning putting the, your vessels into boiling water once. I, I saw that. Um, but according to Ben Shkai here, it's a three times. And for those who have been uh, with us in this, uh, in this Eliezer uh, uh, program, you would remember the significance of three. It's not uh, just a number. <laughs> uh, choose it ran randomly. Alaha number 15. Alcohol free, uh, sure. <laughs> later, later, whatever it's a dig. Alaha number 15. When one buys a used metal vessel from a non Jew, it must be first immersed in a boiling water. To make it kosher, then immerse it in a mikveh. Law formation of vessels. A, a reference is, is, is also given here, as you can as you can see there. It's in the second year. When immersing the vessel in a mikveh, in make in a mikveh, one sh, one recite a bracha. Al hatibila. Kelly, it's not just uh, you being uh, the Mickey Van, uh, you dip in, <laughs> and that is it. It must be. You remember uh, Rabbi Shimon in his uh, um, uh, teaching this morning, he talked about, talk about salt. He was much more focusing on something, when it, something passing. Um, he mentioned about the salt. And he said, everything there is a soul. I mean, in everything you have got a soul trapped in there. So reciting the bracha is the same idea. It's not just uh, putting the, the vessel in the, mik in the mikveh and that is it. No, it's both the action of man and the, the reciting of a bracha over that specific mitzvah, that he release that is spark from where it is a trap. Hello? Where is it a trap? Hello? In a clipper. In a clipper. So that's why you have to do both action. There must be a kavana, an intention of doing that. And there must be an action. And there must be a bracha over that mitzvah, or else it's not does not count. Alaha continues. If more than one vessel must be immersed, the formula, the formula is al tevilat kelim in a plural. If it is one, use use a singular. 
This is the custom here in Baghdad. We do not accept the opinion of that one recite al nativi al tibilat kelim on only one vessel. You don't you don't use a plural if um, like a kelim or vessels. If you, if it is only one um, um, uh, kelly. If it's only one Kelly, the opposite is also true. Rav Pealim is the work of Ben uh, However, if you want to recite Ala Tevilati Kelim, excuse me for a moment. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. However, if you want to recite al, uh, al tevilati kelim when immersing one when immersing one vessel, or al tevilati kelim when immersing several vessels, one fulfills one's obligation. One fulfills his obligation, but. But you, you have to be very precise because we, we will see. We will see. Uh, I, I saw it on on this halakha. What I wanted to say, it, it will be said here. Glasses, glass vessels, which are used to store wine or beer, are considered like metal vessels. And it must be immersed in a, in a mikveh before being used. A bracha must be recited over their immersion. It's ruled by Bet David, Zal. It's opposed to the ruling of Mate, Yehuda, Zal. This ruling was delivered by my grandfather, Rabbi Moshe Chaim Zal who instituted this uh, practice many years ago in Baghdad, and who was accustomed to repeat it at his uh, public lecture, every Shabbat Hagadol. This custom was continued to by my father, Zar, and subsequently by myself every year. The custom is thus a diff, diff, is it thus, definite and there is no question of whether or not to recite a bracha where the authors where the author well it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a, it's a reference to pasha lech lecha where the author recite a ruling in his work Rav pa pealim that the problem raised by a doubt whether or not to recite a bracha do not apply wherever a custom is established. Everyone follows his custom. The custom, according to what I have learned from my Rosh Yeshiva, custom is a chief. You are not um, permitted to give up your, your custom. Um, for others. It, this concept is, is really very, very, very big, broad. Alakha number six, 16, and we are going to end um, at Alakha number, I think, yeah, number 17 for today. It is forbidden to need the door for Matzot with water which was not left standing in a container overnight. The water should be drawn either closer to dusk or during the period of dusk. Rabbi Akiva, when it say dusk, dusk. What, what time is it? Dusk is Ma? Say it again, I, can, I cannot. Uh, 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 yeah, just for the sake of our. Uh, 
Yes. The third is stage of twilight. So it's like um, there's, you know, when the sun goes like goes down. Yes. And it's just between the stage between like the day and the, and the night. Yes. That's twilight. So mm -hmm. that's the dark stage of twilight. Like like it closer to Prague Mincha. No, no, no. Is it, it's like Shia. Yes. But it's more dark than. Ah, oh, okay. 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 The water should be drawn. Well, I, I read that too. Uh, my apology. Rabbi Chaim Plagi Zal ruled in his work, Chaim Leroche. That is the time during which one may draw the water is from 10 minutes before Magrav is called. Until Magrav, exactly at the end of the, the 12th hour of the day. It's explained more than, more than we did. And one must stop drawing the water when Magrav is called. One should, one should preferably not allow a non-Jew to draw the water, which is to be used in a, in a matter, in a matzot mitzvah. That is the matzot which will be eaten to fulfill the mitzvah on the night of, of Seder. One should be particular to draw it, to draw it oneself. What, what does that this halacha really mean? Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. I, yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm probing it to, to get a, to get now, something because it, speak, it speaks about a non-Jew cannot draw the water. But it further went on to say, one should be particular to draw the water by oneself. Fine. We have got the aspect of a non-Jew not to draw that water. But there is another element that one must be particular to draw that water oneself. Does it mean? <laughs> In, a, in an aspect of drawing, in an aspect of drawing the water by myself, does it mean that, does it mean that my, my child shouldn't do it? Well, my wife shouldn't do it, or it, my husband shouldn't do it? The, well, I'm not a, I, well, not my husband, I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> what? Excuse me. The age of bar mitzvah. Yeah. The, the age, the age above bar mitzvah. Below. Or below, or you say below. Twelve and fifteen. Yes. Your kids are simply an extension of. Uh, uh, after bar mitzvah. Then they're 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 the old. So can they not draw water for me? I, I would think that they could if they're below. Because it's like if you same thing for your wife. Yes. The wife in certain ways is simply an extension of you. Yes. She she very good. She, That's the, the aspect, the distinction. I wanted you to draw because there is a distinction. A nine you and the and that element of saying. One must be particular to draw that the water that you are going to use um, um, in making your dough. It is important, it is most important to cover the mouth of the container properly so that nothing may fall into it. If one leaves the container of water on the roof overnight, one should be careful to bring them in 
to bring in before sunrise. Sunrise. Otherwise, one may forget them there, and that the sun may shine on on water, and uh, warm it up. Thus rendering it unfit for use until it is left over, until it is left overnight a second time, or perhaps it will be a cloud, a cloudy day, which also this, which has this the same effect as a Sunday. It is best to leave the container on a veranda or a porch, where they will be covered if one has one. On our, on our halakha, or halakhot, I guess we have to end here for today. And the best of Hashem, we will continue tomorrow um, on this halakhot, particularly on halakhot on for Pesach, because it's just a few days ahead of us. We are, and if there is if there is any question, please do not hesitate to contact us. Um, we are tuning it to our main limud. Continuing with or continuing our learning. On the letter of Ramban to his son. Rabbi Pinchas, the Rosh Yeshiva, Bosina Kadisha, here in Yerushalayim, goes more deeper into Tikkun Midot every week. He brings a sword on many, many aspects related to Tikkun Midot. What, are, what is Tikkun Midot? Tikkun Midot is refining one's character trait, one's flaws. That gives an impression that Akadosh Baruch Hu gave us the ability to do that. Many people are in a, or have got tendencies of saying, I, I cannot change. Who are you to change me? <laughs> it's not about you being changed. It's about you change yourself. But how could you be changed? How could you change yourself if you do not know? in what area you, you needed to change. I came across some works and said, if Hashem did not give us the halakha or halakhot, if he did not uh, give us the midot or the, speci the specification how to behave ourselves, then certainly about hygiene, we would have uh, learned from the cat because they are too particular when it comes to hygiene. Cat themselves. Then we would have learned more modesty from the bed, like the dove. In nature, nature itself, we have got so many things we could learn from. But Hashem, in his sort of leaving us to learn from nature, he gave us his teaching. He gave us the mitzvot. He gave us the halachot so that we can study them to enable our, each one of us behave accordingly. 
This is the letter of Ramban. When he speaks about character traits, character trait one should uh, avoid, character trait one should um, take to himself to enable <coughs> you acquire the Torah. Because the life of a Jew and a non-Jew is to acquire Torah. The Torah in its entirety is not only for the Jewish people. It's a misinterpretation, it's a misperception, it's a misperspective by some who are saying the Torah is only for the Jews. No. Yes, the Jews have got, a, have got one aspect in the Torah. So are the non-Jews world. They have got also another aspect in the Torah. Throughout the portions we have learned, throughout the portions we have learned from the very beginning of this letter until portion number 13, Ramban telling his son that he must pay serious thought And he wants his son that failing to do that, his son must remember. There are day of judgment, a day to give an account. But we think in mostly in most cases we think that no, according to the Greek mind, we think oh no those days uh, let me deal with my old now I will deal when I will I will cross the bridge when I, when I get there no. Ramban in in this letter, in his letter, particularly the com the commendators or the commendator or the translator of his of this letter. <laughs> he uses different scenarios. He give us, he draw a picture and said, frustrations one get in this world, disappointment we get in this world, including illness, are part of all, they are the discipline of Gainon. When you see yourself going a certain trial, and we go through trials, many go through trials. Trials in our families, in our homes, in the marketplace, in the politics, financially, in the finance, we simply go through trials everywhere. And when you receive that, rest be assured that these are messengers. These are the disciplines of Gainon. This is commentary of the translator of this letter. We have dealt with Rabbi. Was, was, a, was it a picture taken over this? Uh, no? Yeah, I can. So that I, I needed to use this uh, board quickly. We have 
on our previous limud, we have dealt extensively with um, the word olam. The word olam, and the Ramban, all the, the translator, the commentary, make a reference to how to acquire some of these character traits. Yes, please. Today, we are going to touch, not to touch, we are going to deal with portion number 14. I read it in Hebrew. And I read, da, da. Yeah. Particularly just da, the word is da. We read it in Hebrew first, and uh, we will read the translation. Understand a few things from this letter. Let's take the information first of all. Yata Beneda Uri E. Ki Hamitiga E. Belibo Al Abriot. Moredihu Bemahut Shamayim. Ki Mitipa El Hu. Bilibush Mahut Shamayim. Shenema. Adonai Malach, Geut Lavesh, Vego, etc. The translation I do not want it to go on particular words, but let's take information for a while. We are going to play with the letters later on. And then now, my son. Understand clearly that one who is prideful in his heart toward other men rebels against the sovereignty of heaven. For he glorify himself in, in, in God's own robes. For it is written, Hashem reigns. He don't see the remnant of remnant, remnant, remnant of grandeur. The commentary under the heading Faces of Pride. Faces of Pride, meaning the dust. Not only the dust, the faces. How it manifests itself, how pride manifests itself. In the, the dust of it, we must not forget the dust of it. The Rebbe of Ukomono, in his work, Notzer Chesed, observed that the proud person, the proud person, in so far as he venerates himself, defies God by, worship, by worshiping himself. The Masechet Avodazara, I looked it up, and some of you who are, um, um, we have got, uh, I mean, in our program, you must have a Sepharia application. You can look it up there. It speaks about uh, Abraham. Masechet Avodazara teaches, teaches that Abraham composed a huge tractate mm -hmm. concerning the prohibition against the idol worship. It consists of no less than 400 chapters. The hundred of chapters did not describe alien or pagan death, but rather details the true source of idolatry, mm -hmm. men's arrogance and the pride. So the Kim said, do we understand the last 
the last part of what I have read. Men's arrogance and the pride is the source of hydro worship. How many do we do that? And not how many we do that. We venerate human beings, we venerate ourselves. Metirasi Yesharim. This is a book. This is a book that uh, keeping on appearing in this letter. But is, this is not the this is not the the Ramban he has used. Is the commentator or the translator used this very book? And I have said at one point in time that. From from Botswana Kadisha, for us we use we use Share Kedusha, written by Rabbi Chaim Vital, mm -hmm. the main student who has written the work of his master, the Arizal. Arizal is our master. And we go according to him. We hold according to him. But this does not mean uh, this book is invalid to us. No, it doesn't mean that way. It only means that we hold according to our master. This book, by examination, Examine the many forms of arrogancy in detail. One, not one, as follows. Pride means that a person take himself seriously. He feels that he is truly worthy of recognition and praise. There are many causes of these feelings. Some deem themselves intelligent, some handsome, and the some distinguished. Others see themselves as, a, as a great, all wise. Proud men conduct themselves in a variety of ways. In order to gain the recognition, they so desperately crave. One type of a person adopted dignified mannerisms so as to make powerful impressions on others. He walks slowly <laughs> with a fine measured step, sit erect, and rises only little by little, like a snake. He doesn't speak with just and nobody. No, sorry, I beg your pardon. He doesn't speak with just anybody, only with the men of immense. <laughs> Eminence and the distinction. When he when he does talk, he does so in in, a, in any enigmatic fashion designed to arouse wonder. In short, all of his movements are conducted with the pompousness as if his flesh were lead and his bones stone all earth. Mm -hmm. Another type of a proud person is seeks to demonstrate his superiority by becoming an earthly terror. He agitated by speaking insolently and it drives men into frenzy. frenzy with his biting resort or retort. A third type of pride reveals himself in a man who thinks that he is already so invested with honor, that honor is insepar inseparable from him. To impress this upon others, he imitates the conduct of the most humble man, meaning he is faking. While in truth, his heart best with it pride. 
There are yet other type of pride which lay smoldering in the heart of men concerning all forms of pride. It is written, the pride of heart, the pride, no, I beg your pardon. The proud of heart are the abomination of Hashem. This is a proverb. Yeah. As I said at the, at the very, very beginning, the letter of Ramban and the translator's commentaries on this letter is about me dot. Dear friend, we have got a few minutes to, to explain a few things. The portion of today, it starts with the word, not it starts, as you can see there, where I have highlighted. It started and now, not later. <laughs> and now, Benny, my son, three letters. We have seen on numerous occasions, the word Bene is bet, nun, yud. In many, in many numerous occasions, all these two, these two specific, I mean, these two letters, the first two letters, meaning bet and noon. Right? They are all referring to, all hinting to Bina. To Bina. The Bina, who is the mother of the seven kings, right? But this very same letter, I mean the, the first letter, bet, on numerous occasions, I have pointed out, it refers to, to Bereshit. To Torot. Torah Shebalpe, or Torah Shebichitav, first, and the Torah Shebalpe. The written Torah that we know is five books, but it's not a truly five books. There are seven books corresponding exactly to the seven kings. The word, the letter, bet, is the first letter that, 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 that uh, opens the Torah. Bet, referring it to, to, to Torah. Noon, the gamma value is 50. Only a few days before Pesach. And then we are going to start counting on math. Counting Omer is about fixing the seven character traits, which are rooted into seven kings that we have been dealing with. And the youth, this, this, this refers to ten sefirot. We know that the, the first three sefirot, which is what? 
the first three. The first three sefirot of the ten sefirot. What? Okay, exactly. Chokma, which is called the Chabad. No, no, no. Yeah. That's Chokma. Yeah. It, it, it depends how you count. Yes. If you're counting. If you count the kettle, you have got the dot. Then you don't count. Yes. No, no, you have got that. No? If you count kettle, yeah. then yeah. you don't count. Yeah. That. Okay. If you count that, then you don't count. Where does Chabad comes in? Chabad is when you, it's the tenth spirit. Yes. When Da'at replaces Ketel. Yes. So it's Chokmah Bin Al-Ha'ad. Yes. Yes. <laughs> if I have got the Ketel, then I have got, a, I have got, I have got the, the Sephirot Da'at, right? If you got Ketel, yes. then you don't count. If that. I, okay. Recently, Ketel, and that uh, I like the same thing, but they're not. When you yes. count Ketel, yes. then you don't count that. Yes. Then because if you count both, then yeah, it's not Ken, Ken. You, you are right. 11. Yeah, you are right. You are right. Okay. But my concern is the first is if you know, no matter where direction we come from. Okay. The, the first is if you know, right. no matter where we are coming from, whether we are using uh, the the kettle or not, we have got three verse, I mean, with three sephirot, yes, the first three, three the first, yes. that are not counted, that are not included in the, in the, in seven. In the seven. Yes. So, the seven ones, I mean, it, not the seven ones, the three one, which are called the mohin, the mohin of a person. They are not included in the servant because that is the head. So you would represent the 10. If I take the three, the mohin, then I have got the body. The body, which is a hinting to our physical emotions. And the those physical emotions are the very ones that we all we are hindered to by the counting of Omer. Because it's about the seven kings. So the word Beni in Mahidush is an allusion to Ten Sefirot. To to Torot, to Bina, the mother of the seven kings. We know that our Torah come from Bina. Torah she uh, uh, come from the Bina. And the Bina, I mean, noon is 50, we know. And we only count up to 49 days. We don't count, we don't count up to 50. Why am I putting emphasis on this specific, on this specific uh, um, um, Beni? Ramban, who is also, who was also all of you, he is one of the Mekubalim, meaning the Kabbalist. Did not just use the word 
for sake of just or rand randomly. No, there is a message hidden in the in his writing. And he started with using the word Beni, quoting one of the Michelet. In the portion of today, the Ramban uses the word Da. What is Da? Da is no. If I put that at the end, that, right? And that the gamma value of these three letters is 474. And uh, <laughs> I'm a convert and I'm rooted here. How so? Because the word Erevrav, <laughs> the word Erevrav, the gamatio value has got the same gamatio value, 476, I mean 74, sorry, 74. That, Why specifically this this word da da no look at this it's the gamma value is 74 we know 74 on our previous remote we dealt quietly i mean extensively with the letter i the letter i is 70 Gamacho value. But if you spell it out, ain, meaning ain, yud, nun, the gamacho value would be 130, right? It, remain, it reminds us the same thing that goes back to Adam Arishon, to the souls that were created by Adam Arishon in the one in uh, throughout 130 years. That is just a passing. I wanted to end with this one because of our time. Let's come back here. Da. Why did Ramban use the word da? He did not say believe. It's not the belief that matters here. Because believing can be shaken. But knowledge is what a Jew is commanded. To know, not to believe. It's there, if I'm not mistaken, it's in Devarim chapter four, meaning in Deuteronomy, chapter four, and the Pasu 35, if I'm not mistaken. You and I are commanded to know Da. Rambani is using the word Da, but what do we know? What are we supposed, what are we supposed to know? And guess what? Last time, or not last time, uh, in our previous remote, I have used this, I made a reference of these two letters. The sage says, the last word that a Jew should say at the last hours, at the last hour of his life in this world, meaning at the point of death, must be Shema Israel. Shema. 
שמע ישראל, השם אלוקינו, השם אחד. שמע, the word is שמע, שמע, אחד, א', דת, אחד, או סורי, סורי, חט, אין דלת. The word is שמה, the last letter. And the אחד, the last. The last letter of the word אחד. And we are told that when we pronounce or when we recite the Shema, we should prolong this letter, the last one, Dalet. What is the purpose? Because of time, that's what Hashem we will, uh, we will take up from there next time. What I'm trying to say is, Rambam is using the word da because da is exactly uh, hindered into Shema that we are required to recite. How many times do we recite Shema a day? Papa Modechai, yeah. I just I just got to your I just opened my the group and I saw your your ordination certificate. Mazatov, Todaraba. Yeah, you made it. Baruch Hashem. Made it? Yeah, well, well, yeah, okay, it's a common language. You, you made it. Baruch Hashem. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, the word, the word didda is also, a, could also be, could also mean Ed, the witness. Rambam is not only hinting that you must know. He is also hinting that either you are a witness or there will be a witness. In the Shema, we are told that it's not about reciting Shema. It's not one of my rabbanim he said Shema is not to he is not only hearing. That's not what is really meant at the uh, deeper uh, of this word. It's not only hear. Like I'm, I wanted to, I want somebody to to hear me. Shema. It's not about hearing. It's about understanding. To know and understand. This is what is implied in the in this in this da. In the portion we have just learned today. Or well, we are just dealing with it now. So they came because of our time. I want to end my limud today. Um, here. I wanted to end here. And uh, please go through the, the portion of today. Believe you me or not, every one of us, as King Shlomo said, in a call it, I wanted to believe this chapter, chapter seven. No man without sin. It does not mean it the way it sounds. It means a human being who neglects to learn, who neglects Torah learning, is easy to fall short. It's easy 
to acquire or to be occupied. And they subjected by the forces of the 70 kings. Meaning you will get emotional, you will get a cast, or gassy, arrogancy, and all those. And that is detrimental, not only to you as an individual, because you belong to a family, you belong to a society, you belong to a nation, the nation of Israel, that is a light. or the, the light to other nations. So if we do not learn and to acquire the knowledge and understanding of Torah, we call it Pagan. What is Pagan? Blemish. Into the chain of the Sephirot that we, we have just learned through the, through the word Beni in the youth at the end of the word, Benny, my son. Thank you very much, it's Tzadikim, Tzadakot. Hope to see you again tomorrow. Best at Hashem. It was a nice, nice, uh, all that. Thank you very much for affording me um, a time to share with you, to learn with you. Yeah, we meet again. Best at Hashem. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen, amen.